What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna look at spin boxes with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at spin boxes, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at spin boxes, but before we get started, a quick note on the video yesterday on threading. Some people were having some troubles if their function was super complicated, they're finding that the threading will start automatically when their app starts, even though they're not clicking the button yet. If you're not, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch the threading video or just ignore this for the next 20 seconds. The way you can fix that is when you call your threading, for instance, in this button here, you have threading.thread and you set your target to whatever function and then you have this dot start. Just take off these two function brackets uh, on the dot start, right? That should stop it from running automatically if you have a super complicated function and you're finding that it's running automatically. If it's not running automatically, uh, you could just you know keep these on there. But if you're having that trouble, you know go ahead and do that. So okay, spin boxes. So this is actually a very very basic widget. I've just never talked about it in this channel, and I don't know why. So in this video, I figured we talk about it. And a spin box is just what this is. It lets you kind of spin the little thing and uh, pick a different thing. So we're, we're doing numbers here, you can do strings, you can do just about anything, so let's get into this. So I've got a file called spin.py, uh, we've got the sublime text editor and the git bash terminal as always, we've got our basic kinter starter code that we always have, and uh, so let's just create a spin box. Let's go my underscore spin, and this is a spin box, right? Spin, spin box widget. And we wanna put it in root, and now we just wanna designate the range that, of numbers that we want. Like I said, we could do strings and, and words and things, we'll talk about that in a minute, for, but for right now, we can just look at a range of numbers. So we can go from underscore equals, and let's just start at zero, and we can go to equals, and let's go to 10. Now, we've seen this from underscore before, we have to do an underscore because from is a Python keyword. So, I mean, look at it up at the top here, when we import Kinter, we're saying from, Kinter import this. See this from? That's a special thing in Python. So we can't use from anywhere else. So instead of using from, because it would want to import something, we use this from underscore. So from zero to 10, that looks good. And let's go my underscore spin dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20, just to push it down the screen a little bit. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. So Python spin dot pi. And when we do, we see this little spin box and we can click the things and it goes from zero to 10 and back down to zero again. So, okay, that's cool. So uh, this is kind of small. We can change the size of this. Like we change the size of just about everything. We can come up here and let's go uh, font equals and just give this whatever font we want. Let's go Helvetica, we always like Helvetica. And let's say 20 font size. If we save this and then run it, we see now it's much bigger. And that's cool. So uh, you see, as we click this, it's moving up one. So from zero to one, one to two, two to three, we can change that if we want by uh, setting an increment level. So just in here anywhere, we can go increment equals, and let's say two, we wanna increment it by two. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. And we see we have zero when we click up, boom, it goes to two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So it increments in two. So you set it to anything you want. You want to increment it by 10, you want to increment it by three, anything you want that works like that. Uh, so that's pretty simple. Now I mentioned we can also, instead of using numbers here, we can use strings or anything. So let's go ahead and copy this and let me just comment this out so we still have it sitting there so we can remember this bit of code here. But instead of, well, let's get rid of our increments. We don't really want that. Instead of setting a from and a to, we can instead set a values. And this is gonna be a tuple and we need to put a comma after it. And inside of here, we can just do whatever we want. So we can go, you know, John, we can go Tim, we can go Mary, we can go uh, Tina, whatever. Save this, run this guy again. And you see now we have John, we can spin up through Tim, Mary, and Tina. So that's one way to do it. 
we could take these things and uh, sort of create a, a tuple ourselves outside of here. So if we copied this, and let's say, let's call this names, and set that equal to that, then instead of you know explicitly putting them in here like this, we could just type in our variable names. So if we save this and ran it, again, same deal, we get John, Tim, Mary, and Tina. And if you wanna increment these by you know one, if you, wanna, if you want it to go from John to Mary, you know, and skip Tim, you could increment by two and that would work just the same. So, okay, that's how we create a spin box. Now, what if we, what if we wanna get the actual values from our spin box? How do we get something out? Like, how do we know which one we've selected when we click the little spin box thing? So we can, let's create a button. Let's go my underscore button. And that's gonna be a button. And we wanna put it in root. And we want the text to equal, I don't know, just say submit. And let's give this a command of grab. We're gonna grab the spin box. And let's go my underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20, just to push it down the screen a little bit. And so now let's come up here and create that function, that grab function. And actually below here, let's create a label. So let's go my underscore label. And that's a label. I wanna put it in root. We want the text to be nothing right now. And let's my underscore label dot pack this guy onto the screen and give it a pad Y again of 20 as we always do. So now we can just come up here inside this grab function and let's say we wanna grab whatever's in the spin box, whatever we selected. Well, and let's output that into that label we just created. So let's go my underscore label dot config. And we could just set the text equal to my underscore spin, which is the name of our spin box dot get and this is a function so we need our little function brackets now we've dot getted things a thousand times throughout this playlist you know entry boxes and things like that um, sliders we dot get them dot get is a normal sort of kinder thing we do it all the time and in this case it works for the spin box too so we could just do that let's save this come back over here and run it again so let's spin this up to mary click submit boom we output mary just that easy so those are spin boxes, not very complicated at all. Very basic widget, I don't know why I have just sort of overlooked talking about them in the past. I guess probably because I don't use them all that often. And they're very similar to combo boxes, which we have talked about in the past. They're just, you know, instead of having a drop down with things you can select, you have to actually, you know, spin through them manually each time. And there's, you know, tons of things, tons of times where you might want something like this for your particular layout or whatever, your particular app where you don't want a drop down box, you want them to just sort of spin through here. And so that's how you do it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on membership. So it pays just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.